Hello everyone and welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. Today I decided to go over another recommendation from my Discord server and that is gardening in Wizard 101. Is it worth it? The answer to that is yes. Why it's worth it and basically the reason why you would do gardening. I also decided that I would do a little bit of a basic gardening tutorial in here. It's not a 69 plot tutorial so if you want one I'm going to leave one in the description. Uh, 69 plot if you don't know is basically just a very like I'm gonna say advanced gardening strategy where you can get quite like you can get literally 69 plants in a, an area and you can farm them and garden them all at the same time with very minimal effort so if you want a tutorial on that i'll leave it in the comments below but otherwise today i'm gonna go over reasons why you do gardening and then the very basics of gardening for newer gardeners uh so let's get into it gardening is it worth it Yes, I can say that with an absolute certainty, it is worth it. But there are three main reasons why you would do it. First off, and this is a big one, is gold. Especially early game, gardening is a really, really easy way to get gold. A lot of gardening plants drop rare treasure cards that can be sold for quite a lot of money. For example, though, later on, Evil Magma Peas I know drop a treasure card faint this one specifically that sells for a few hundred in the bazaar and it drops it so much to the point where you're gonna have hundreds of these after farming evil magma peas for a while and you can sell them extremely often and selling them will net you a ton of gold so if you're starved for gold gardening could be a way to solve that on top of that though usually a lot of seeds give rare reagents these reagents can either be sold for lots of money such as like turquoise can be sold for like 500 a piece i know some plants actually do drop that but there are other things as well that are dropped but the rarest reagent of all um that you can get from them which is extremely useful is amber you can get amber from king parsley specifically which are dropped throughout all of azteca and uh, later arc 2 worlds or ultra king parsley specifically will drop the full amber rather than just the amber dust and you get ultra king parsley's from rattle bones exalted duels every time you garden a plant you get the seed back which is just an easy way to get quite a lot of amber amber is used if you don't know for crafting the spells in the game you can see my fire has quite a lot of it but if i wanted more i would probably uh use some ultra king parsley's to garden some more beyond that though there is one main reason one main reason that everyone does gardening which is extremely useful and that is mega snacks if you don't know, some rare seeds such as couch potatoes or evil magma peas will drop a tier 9 mega snack every time you harvest them at Elder. I don't know if you can like recognize this, but a tier 9 mega snack, the ones that give 50 plus uh, pet XP, dropping 100% of the time from an Elder plant is super, super useful, especially since you get a seed back 100% of the time you garden a plant all the way. That's just incredibly useful and can be used really effectively. Like, like I know that there's been people I've seen that have 999 of almost every tier 9 mega snack in the game, which is crazy and super useful because when double pet XP rolls around, they can very, very easily get a pet up to mega and uh, do that within minutes even if they want to. And those are the main reasons why you would do gardening. Now let's go into the more hows of it because uh, that's we're usually pretty useful so starting with the very basics gardening in this game is done by coming to first melinda Wu at level 12 and then farley and farley will teach you some stuff uh he'll have a train option for you guys not for me though because i've already trained all the spells basically you train his spells and what they do is they allow you to actually garden plants and then maintain their needs plants will go through different cycles of life they'll start as a seed and eventually progress to elder which an elder plant is when you harvest it for full rewards it will look like this you can see right here a slightly transparent version of the plant you can actually see the different stages of the plants right here you have the seed itself you have it grown slightly the mature option and then finally elder they will mature but through this after you plant them in the plot which is a spell that you're given from him uh different seeds require different plots so you can see evil magma peas require a medium plot couch potatoes require a large some require small pretty easy to uh, understand once you plant them in that they will eventually have needs such as pests attacking them they need sunlight they need water overall some pretty common needs uh, later on in Krakatopia and later uh, I'll show you the Krakatopia trainer later they drop wider 
ranges for the spells those are incredibly useful when you're farming multiple plants at the same time but you want to take care of their needs otherwise they will not grow and they will eventually wilt and die so take care of them and get them to elder and from there you can harvest them pretty easily that's really the basics of it is maintaining their needs and keeping them from dying uh but you can get the larger spells uh later on so let me actually go and show you that this gardener right here marley in mushu is going to be probably the most important one because he drops the large area of effect spells that you can use to garden multiple plants at the same time so come to him they do cost quite a bit of gold but trust me once you get them you won't regret it they are incredibly useful for farming now let's actually get into the different seeds you want obviously you can plant anything you can garden anything there are some very good plants to garden but these are the three main ones that i think are worth gardening in my opinion and that is couch potatoes evil magma peas and king parsley's i already went over king parsley's uh earlier in this video but evil magma peas are useful because they drop that faint treasure card i mentioned and they drop very rare uh mega snacks those are pretty pretty good rewards and they're pretty easy to maintain evil magma peas are commonly dropped in avalon and in worlds such as mirage higher they will be dropped pretty frequently and i know that i've gotten like probably 30 evil magma p drops over my two accounts over the course of just doing arc three so evil magma peas aren't too hard to get Couch potatoes are similar, dropped in Grizzleheim, Winter Tusk, and Arc 3 onwards. Similar to Evil Magma Peas, uh, they will drop a Mega Snack when they're at full maturity, and I'm sure they drop some treasure cards as well that will be pretty useful to get. So those are the main ones I'd recommend. Now let's go over probably one of the most important parts about gardening, and that is gardening boosts. This is also the last thing I want to go over. First off, you're going to want to buy the Red Barn Farm. The reason why you want this, um, you may notice my fire uses it. The Red Barn Farm provides a passive, I believe, 15% bonus to literally every plant's growth. So you definitely want to get this. It's definitely uh, an incredibly useful thing to do. So just save up that 125000 buy it, and then uh, use it to garden. Once you have it, you can plant the plants anywhere, so don't worry about that. But um, an important thing to note is to get the other boosts as well, such as you can see here, I have this egg basket, this Jemba drum, and the tropical garden gnome, all pretty easy to get. I'll let you look up how to get them. Like you can get them like extremely easily around the spiral, um, but they all provide some boosts to plants, specifically evil magma peas, I know in this case. And with all of these boosts combined, you can get a solid like uh, 30% boost to the plant's growth, which is incredibly useful to actually do. That's the main thing to go over now that I have really uh, done it. But this is a basic gardening tutorial. I'm not going to go too in-depth with it. As I said, I'm not going to do a 69 plot. If you want to do a 69 plot, go look at the uh, link that I will post in the comments below for a good tutorial on a 69 plot. They can be incredibly useful for getting these and a large area of effect spell will uh, actually do all of them and will make it incredibly easy to garden and get massive rewards. Uh, but that's really it, I think. I've gone over all of the basics for gardening. Let me know if um, if there's anything like I missed that's like really major. Let me know in the comments below. But I think I hit pretty every every point pretty good for basic gardening tutorial. If there's any seeds that you would recommend, leave them in the comments below as well. I think I touched over the main ones, but obviously there are going to be some more that I didn't mention. I can't really mention everything in a you know a 10 minute video. If I tried to hit every topic, it would end up being like 30 minutes long, and no one wants a 30 minute long tutorial. Uh, but that's it for today. Make sure to drop a like, hit the sub button if you found it useful, go support me financially on Patreon, and join my Discord server if you wish. But that's it for today. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Adios.